a law school myself, that there is a constitutional law professor at a law school in the United States who makes his class read the Federalist Papers as part of the curriculum. Hmm. And all these law students are saying, this is really hard to understand. And he says to them, well, you do understand the Federalist Papers were written for publication in the newspaper so everybody could read about it. So sooner or later, you might get to the point where you'll be as smart as the average person in the 1890s that or the 1790s. That you're representing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's that's part that's of what's bit, going on. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. You know, if, if people don't make the effort and understand what there is to learn and not expect somebody else mm -hmm. to learn it for them and then tell them what's in there. Mm -hmm. well, you There's know, a lot of good stuff to learn there. When you think about it, we are sort of like in history. I mean, this is the first state, if you will, like a, like what uh, Governor Kitzhop has proposed, you know, right. i.e. the superintendent for both ends of the deal. And he's going to have this super committee, and maybe that might be an entity they should have a discussion on. Yeah. You know, and not, not only in all due respect, not only just African American history, but Asian American history. Uh, Hispanic, uh, Spanish history, sure. you know I mean? just right down the line. Right. And, and then at the same time, maybe talk to about the standpoint of the curriculum of the teacher. If you're going to be getting a, t a teacher certificate, that should be a mandatory, if you will, as part of that certificate holder. And right. then all these so-called, in all due respect, the charter schools and all these other schools, these private schools and whatever, that should be also mandatory. Maybe maybe that maybe they can put together some sort of a certificate that you have to go up and pick that up, if you will, so that in fact it is right. inclusive. Because many of them are lobbying, if you will, and saying, okay, fine, we are diverse in, in nature. So if that's if that's a fact, then fine. You, the teachers, people who are there's got to be something there to help out. We all are trying to do something. Well, I mean, everybody likes to politicize things yeah. nowadays. Yeah. But if we take stuff that's there and we all have a mindset, I'm going to study this stuff and I'm going to learn about it before I stand up and try and teach somebody else. I mean, parents can do this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, they sure can. I mean, either we are committed to understanding things ourselves or we're committed to having somebody else figure it out for us and then tell us what to think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know of very many people, Governor Kitzhaber included, who would advocate for okay, let's, let's make sure that somebody does our homework for us and then tell us what to think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can agree no, that right, we right. all need to be better informed. Right, right. And especially in the age of the Internet. Right. Oh, wow. For us to say we don't know in the age of the Internet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's difficult. Mm -hmm. So, again, now we're talking about solutions now. Herb. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what we're talking about because we need to get this information out. And the responsibility, like you said, uh, families, mothers, fathers, uh, young folks. I mean, I, I think about our young people today. You know, uh, a lot of times they're depicted as gang members and things of that nature. I eat specifically, right. if you're a gang member, you have to be black. Got me? And then I'm thinking about what about them knowing their history and what that would do, if you will, to counter some of their so called whatever ways that they're having. Right. It's very, very important. Well, I think we allow politics to divide us when, yes. if we're all committed to really understanding yes. some things, yes. there's a lot to be that we can come together on. Exactly. I heard a story here about a week ago of uh, two professors at the university I attended who did a study trip for a number of years every summer to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I just heard this story, even though I knew the professor. Um, one day they were hiking around in the hills overlooking Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. And he sits the class down and says, do you all want to hear what happened on December 7th, 1941? Because I was here. And he spent an hour and a half telling everybody his first-hand impressions of what it was like to be there for Pearl Harbor. And a bunch of university students sat there on, a, on rocks and listened to him for an hour and a half. Because it was personal. It was, personal. It was real. Yeah, it was real. Yeah. And I think that's what we need to do is we need to help people be able to share what's real mm -hmm. and to understand that. And if we put politics aside and say, yeah. let's talk about yeah. Yeah. what happened, let's learn a little bit, mm -hmm. I think we have tremendous opportunities to bring people together rather than to drive them apart. And it's the history of this country. Absolutely. That's, that's the thing that gets me. It is the history of this country. And, you know, if one doesn't identify with their history, I mean, they need that as a base, if you will, right. to, to survive, well, we, to be someone. Human beings can be naturally lazy. Yes. We all like right. the easy road more than the right. hard road. 
But I think if we commit ourselves to really understanding things and to understanding other people, mm -hmm. and if we realize that we're all on the same lifeboat, mm -hmm. I mean, and we doesn't are. matter wh where we came from or what color our skin is, mm -hmm. we're all part of the United States. Mm -hmm. So we're in for a penny, in for a pound. And we can decide to fight amongst ourselves, or we can say, let's try and move things down the road. Let's, let's, let's maybe talk about who, is, who, should, who, who do you think should be some of the leading proponents of what we're trying to get, uh, get them to, to notice? Well, I think part of it is um, in the educational establishment, what happens nowadays is there are certain kind of politically correct right. authors or theories and everybody tends to teach about those perspectives. Mm -hmm. So, and there's very little openness to a different point of view. My, in my own judgment, if I, as I reflect back on my education, what I'd like to see is more discussion based on people doing homework and actually talk about different points of view. And we may not agree at the end of a class period, but if we have people talking about different perspectives, and saying, you know, this is all in the spirit of learning and not trying to, you know, get the better of somebody else. Mm -hmm. I think it, it injects a new um, way of looking at things that's much more positive for the way that our government functions. Because our government was constructed really t because of checks and balances to make it difficult to make decisions because we should work hard at figuring out the the laws that we pass. It shouldn't be a slam dunk. Hmm. So I think if we if we all are willing to consider different points of view and to say, I want to have a conversation with somebody who may disagree with me, mm -hmm. there's some opportunities yeah, there. Yes, yes, yes. That's hard. Yes, yes. But I think that that's, that's something that would be really important. And, and again, I heard a story about a U.S. history class where one half of the class was told to read the Federalist Papers, and the other half of the class was told to read the Anti-Federalist Papers. Hmm. So everybody wasn't even reading the same book. And then they had discussions. Hmm. Hmm. And they shared the perspectives from those two things. Where are these folks? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> are they elected to office? I mean, where are they? I mean, or was it just a discussion, you know, for that particular period? Picked up their grades and kept on going. Yeah. But, but I mean, I think... I mean, even this show, I think, yeah, is a yeah. demonstration of let's let's get some people together, let's talk about stuff, let's all learn together. That's what we're doing. That's right. what that's what we need to do. Right. It would be nice to have it on some of the major networks, but unfortunately, they that they, they don't participate. Next year. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> I might add too that Portland State has a Black Studies uh, curriculum, if you will, but it's an elective kind of a thing. Right. I'd be interested. I, I don't know that much about it, but the fact that maybe I'd be interested. Maybe I'll call the president up and see if we can get him on the show and see whether or not we be able to maybe maybe look at maybe structuring something along that particular line. Well, and and, and I read another book here recently that was really important uh, to me in terms of my understanding. It was written by a black man, and one of the things that he pointed out. You know, we talk about. Um, minority underachievement, right, you know, in, right. in public education right. in particular. And he was talking about um, SAT scores in Harlem back mm -hmm. in the 1940s, mm -hmm. which were as high or higher than the predominantly white schools out in the suburbs. <laughs> now, when was the last time well, you heard about a well, conversation I, like I've that? I've never heard that one. I've never heard that one. So. Well, look, we got about another two minutes or so, I guess. But the other thing I'd like to talk from a local standpoint, in sure. terms of uh, another person that we might be able to influence and maybe see if they can get it in his curriculum, is that he was highlighted in the, this this week's Portland Tribune, and uh, and it's a very interesting piece. I would suggest you pick the uh, pick the article up. This uh, and the, the headline was "We're not going to let them f fail," and this was Tony Hobson, the SEI, SEI, and we're going to do a, a full a piece on this piece next week probably but understand that uh, uh, maybe maybe that might be someone we might be able to talk to about sure. the possibility of getting this in their curriculum you got me right. because I think 80 to 85 percent of, of the of, uh, of the class of their, of their students are African Americans and they too should need that they need to know this particular history. I don't know whether or not he's got that part of the curriculum maybe right. not but it's my understanding you know this guy you well you, it's, you know as we were talking before the before the show Tony Hobson and I went to went to the college together. We were, we were classmates and we didn't know each other well, but right. we knew each other. 
And as I pointed out to you, he was committed to doing what he's doing even back in yeah. college. Wow, wow. But you know what? I, yeah, we might great be, guy. We might be able to get something together here. Well, we'll, we'll work on yeah, that. That's a, <laughs> that's a sign. Any, other, any other points you may want to bring up that we might be able to? We're still talking about solutions and whatever. Right. Any other thoughts? Well, I, the other thing that I would say is that, you know, parents have a really big role in helping their kids understand and, mm -hmm. and to be committed to learning. And I would like to think that we could all commit ourselves as parents to being more involved in education and supporting our kids' education and expecting excellence in our education. Mm -hmm. And to come alongside the teachers, it's not the teacher's job to educate kids, it's the parent's job with the teacher's help. And I would like to think that if everybody's pulling in the same direction, we can not only make our education uh, a better process and more effective, but we can also learn how to work together on some things. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I, I, wanna, I wanna thank again Debbie Mervin for getting us together. Yes. Because I would not have had access, and she was one that basically was responsible for IE focusing on various subject matters, and especially during the time that we were having politics and the like, and, and that was one of her points, to get that, get that message out and hopefully get it to those individuals who are running for office and understand that right. this is very, very important pieces along the line. And so again, we want to thank Debbie for for, uh, for doing what she's doing, and we'd like to make sure we'd like to make sure that we, we thank her and and, uh, and anything we can do, right? And that's what we're doing right you now bet. at this point in time. And again, it's always been a pleasure. And uh, and Herb, but thank you very much for, for being a part it's of a this pleasure. particular show. We appreciate that very much. And and uh, I think that we're going to have you back on, right? I would love to do we're that. Gonna, we're going to continue to do this. We could have some fun, couldn't we? Very much so. We will definitely <laughs> do that. Maybe we might have the governor on. That might be a start. With us? Yes. Okay. That sounds great. Okay, again, thank you very much for being a part of the of the show today. And, and again, I, I guess we got about a, maybe a half a minute or so and whatever. But, hey, tell your friends and whatever. There's a repeat of this particular show. Uh, there's a repeat for this particular show. Look like we got about three minutes or so, right? About three. We got about, no, no we on three at this point in time. But the bottom line is that um, it repeats again. You saw the schedule uh, this Tuesday. At, uh, at 12 noon, at 12 noon on channel 22. And then the following Friday, Friday at 8 p.m. on channel 23. And we'd hope that you will get your friends and others and, and other folks that you may have influence with, and even those folks at Bethel AME Church, okay? Again, thank you very much for being with us. We'll see you next week. As George Page always said, back to what you believe in. <laughs>